So a couple of days ago, before I got this haircut, I put on my short shorts and went out for a hike to take some pictures of the sunset with these two cameras. It looks like it's gonna be a beautiful sunset, so I'm gonna go for a quick hike. I'm gonna take you with me. And I'm bringing these guys as well. I got the Fujifilm X-Pro3 with the 50mm f2, and I've got my, well, this isn't mine, it's borrowed, but it's Fujifilm X-T3 with the 16 to 2.8. Show you a little bit of a comparison between the X-T3 and the X-Pro3. Some people have told me on my YouTube channel that the X-T3 is better than the X-Pro3, but um, stick around and find out if after this video, my mind has been changed. And I got home and I realized that the video was completely not helpful. Hi everybody, my name is Zach. I'm a photographer and arts administrator based in Santa Barbara, California. Now, right off the bat, I'll say that I love both of these cameras. If you've watched the channel at all, you will know that I love the X-Pro3. This is one of my favorite cameras. It is my personal camera of choice for all of my personal work, for the times when I just wanna get outside and shoot. I love this camera. Now, the X-T3, this is Fujifilm's workhorse camera. This is an amazing hybrid camera. It's a really wonderful first professional camera. Lots of people love this camera. I don't have the relationship with this camera that a lot of people do, but I love this camera. So which one should you get? The X-Pro3, the X-T3. Really my answer is the same thing that I always say, and that is it depends on you, what you're shooting, how you're gonna use the camera, what kind of work you're making, and that will tell you which camera is right for you. But let's talk a little bit about each of these cameras to maybe help you get to that decision. So build quality and aesthetics. They both look like film-ish cameras. Um, depending on your preference, you know, you'll know which one you sort of like more in terms of its aesthetics, but they both look similar. They have a similar profile. They have the same Fujifilm XF lens mount, so they can each take the Fujifilm XF lenses. Right now I have the 16 to 55 on the X-T3, so it looks a little bit bulkier than the X-Pro3 with the 50 millimeter F2. Here's what they look like without the lenses on them. So they're quite comparable in terms of size. In terms of build quality, my preference is the X-Pro3 by far. I like the rangefinder style. I like the way it looks more. It feels very premium to me. It has these top and bottom titanium plates. It feels a lot more solid to me than the X-T3. That's not to say the X-T3 is not well built, but the X-T3 compared with the X-Pro3 feels a little bit more plasticky. It just doesn't feel as nice, but it is a well-built camera and I think it feels better in person than it looks on the internet. Both of the camera bodies are weather sealed and they both have two SD card slots. The X-T3 has a little bit better choice of inputs, including a 3.5 millimeter microphone and headphone jack, as well as an HDMI, whereas the X-Pro3 just has a USB-C and a 2.5 millimeter headphone jack. So let's talk about the viewfinder and LCD. So the X-T3 has a prominent LCD on the back. It is articulating. You can shoot low or high horizontally. You can also shoot low or high vertically. Um, so if this is something that you value in shooting, the X-T3 is gonna be great for you. It also has a really wonderful EVF here in the center of the camera. Now the X-Pro3 is a little bit different. It has this folding LCD screen in the back, so it, the LCD is hidden. So by default, you're not gonna be really shooting with the LCD if you wanna shoot with the LCD. You have to shoot like this. If you're gonna be shooting with the LCD all the time, this might get kind of annoying. The good thing about this screen though is it encourages you to shoot in new and different ways. The screen is protected. It's a refreshing way of shooting and you can also shoot low if you fold the screen down. You can even shoot like this and I guess you can shoot high if you have the camera upside down. So they both offer an articulating screen. It just depends on how you use the LCD screen. The viewfinder is another big difference. The X-Pro3 has an a hybrid viewfinder, so it has an electronic viewfinder in here that looks amazing. It also has an optical viewfinder, and it also has a, a hybrid optical electronic viewfinder. I talked about this in my X-Pro3 10 Reasons Why I Love It video, so if you're curious about that, check it out. If the viewfinder is enticing to you on the X-Pro3, you're gonna go with the X-Pro3 because the X-T3 only offers the EVF, it doesn't offer the OVF, and it's not a rangefinder style, whereas the, the X-Pro3 you're shooting, you can shoot like this with half of your face, uncovered. The X-T3 
you're going to be shooting like this. But, I mean, does that really make that much of a difference? I'm left eye dominant, so I'd be shooting like this either way. Anyway, something to think about. If you like rangefinder inspired design cameras, uh, the X Pro 3 will be better for you. In terms of autofocus, these cameras are pretty much the same. Like I haven't really noticed any major differences in autofocus. I usually use single point autofocus. The face tracking on these works, but it's not as good as something like Canon in my opinion. And I just feel more confident using the single point autofocus. I've said this in past videos. It's just the way I shoot. It doesn't mean that the camera is not good. It just means that I need to put more time into shooting with the face tracking so that I'm more confident with it. But um, yeah, so anyway. Autofocus, I would say either one will be great for you. In terms of image quality, these cameras are pretty equal. They use the same sensor and the photos and video that's coming out of them looks pretty much identical in terms of image quality. As far as the film simulations go, they're again, pretty much the same. The X-Pro3 does offer classic negative, which is one of my favorites. So if that's important to you, you're gonna wanna go with the X-Pro3. Um, I don't know if that's really a deal breaker Probably not, but it is just something to consider. Now, speaking of video, they both take really wonderful video and they can both utilize the Fujifilm film simulations. They can both shoot an F-log. The X-T3 is by far the better video camera because it does offer some increased video specs like 4K up to 60 frames per second. It also has the LCD on the back screen, so that makes it so much easier to shoot video with the X-T3. Also with the X-T3, you have those 3.5 millimeter jacks for microphone and for headphones, which is really awesome. The X-Pro3 is just a little limited in terms of what it can do for video. You know, you have that folding LCD screen, so that's gonna be kind of annoying if the camera's on a tripod or if you're trying to shoot video with the LCD. Also, it shoots 4K, really great 4K, but only up to 30 frames per second. So if you need the 60 frames per second, um, that'll be a downer for you. I barely ever shoot slow motion. I need to try that more. So for me, it doesn't really matter. The X-Pro3 is a really fantastic B cam if I need it. So just keep that in mind. If it's if you're doing a lot of video work, it probably makes more sense for you to go with the X-T3 because it'll just be easier, but it is possible to take really great video with the X-Pro3. Now price is another big factor in this decision. So the X-Pro3 hovers around $2,000. The black model that I have is about 1,800 US dollars, while the X-T3 is about 1,500 US dollars. Back in the fall, the X-T3 was actually on sale for only 999 bucks. I almost bought one, but I just, <laughs> I don't really need one, so I didn't. But I did think about it because it's such a great camera and that is a really good deal. You'll save some money if you go with the X-T3 over the X-Pro3, so that's something to consider as well. So this one I'm calling like special sauce because I couldn't really think of anything else in the moment to describe what I'm about to talk about, but basically it is like, what do these cameras do for you? How do you use them? How do they inspire you to shoot? Are they calling out to you? Choose me, choose me. By the way, can we just hear the shutter sound on this? Oh, it's just so good. Let's see what the X-T3 sounds like. It's also pretty good, not gonna lie. So what I mean by this is like, how do you shoot? I said this at the beginning. This is about you and your way of working, what kind of work you're making, how you shoot. For me, the X-Pro3 is very interesting to me and attractive to me because of everything I talked about in my 10 reasons why I love this camera video. And a lot of that is that the X-Pro3 is this really beautiful little camera that I can take with me everywhere and shoot with for personal projects, more creative projects, creative photos on professional shoots. Like it's a good enough camera to use in professional capacity. Like all the time as your only professional camera. But it's also a camera that encourages me to shoot differently and to be creative. And I just really love that about the X-Pro3. The X-T3 doesn't do that for me. The X-T3 is more of a, a workhorse camera. It's a 
everyday camera that you would use to get your work done. It's a tool to do your work. And that's something that is incredibly valuable. That's something that's necessary. I have two of those cameras, the R and the R6. Those are my workhorse cameras that I use pretty much on every client shoot and on every shoot for the opera. If I didn't have those cameras, you know, I would consider something like the X-T3, but for me, I've just chosen to go with the Canon system for like that sort of workhorse kind of camera. But if you're somebody who's just starting and you're looking for a great professional camera to get started with, the X-T3 is an excellent, excellent choice because it is this hybrid camera. It's a good price for what you're getting. It gives you a lot to work with in this little compact camera that you can take with you everywhere. By the way, someone like commented on my video and was like, the X-Pro3 is not compact. I beg to differ, blah de blah Again, it's relative. Like, this is a small camera. Look at this thing. I mean, how can you tell me that this is not a small camera? It's light. Like, if you put on the 16 to 55, maybe it's not that small. Like, this is a lot heavier and bigger, but... I only use the f2 lenses on my X-Pro3 most of the time, and it's a small camera that I don't even notice if I have it strapped on. So for me, it is a perfect size. If you're someone who already has a workhorse camera and you're looking for a different type of camera, a special camera for personal work, something to get your creative mind moving, like the X-Pro3 is great for that. It's great as an accessory camera. That's how I use it. It's in addition to my Canon cameras. And I love the way it works in that capacity. If I could only have one camera, it might not make sense for me to only have the X-Pro3. I might have to go with one of my workhorse cameras just because you know, I use them to get the work done. But at the end of the day, you can do everything you need to do with this camera. And so who are we to be complaining about what we have? You know, I'm, I just have the luxury of having more than one camera. And so for me, the X-Pro3 fits in really nicely. But can you use it as your only professional camera? Of course, it all depends on how you work and what you use. So I would say, consider the things that I've talked about. Go watch other videos that will give you more in-depth comparisons of these cameras or in-depth reviews of these cameras to learn a little bit more, do your research and determine which one is gonna be right for you. At the end of the day, you want a camera that's going to inspire you to get out and shoot because the more you shoot, the more you will improve, the better you'll become. But you also want a camera that is going to be able to accomplish the work that you need to accomplish, right? Because these are also tools as much they are like objects that we like to talk about and pick up and hold and all that stuff. They're tools that allow us to create work and they're important in that sense. So think about which one is right for you and do your research and then make a decision for yourself. Don't just listen to random people on the internet like me. So thank you so much for watching. As always, if you're new here, please subscribe. I'd love to see you at the next video. I'll see you soon. Bye. Love is free, coming alive.